So you've narrowed down your search for the perfect Bible translation and on your list is the ESV. I was in this exact position about four years ago. Up until then, I would used the King James Version exclusively, mainly because I was brought up in churches that said this was the only Bible we should use. But I wanted something a bit more modern and easy to read, and eventually I settled on the ESV. And I've got to say, I've never regretted that decision. So if you're on the fence about switching to the ESV, maybe because you don't know enough about it, then this video is for you. We're going to discuss everything you need to know about the ESV Bible so you can decide if it's the right translation for you. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you my recommendation for the best ESV study Bible, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Let's get started. The ESV Bible was published in 2001 by Crossways. It was created by a team of more than 100 leading evangelical scholars and pastors. And although the ESV is a fairly recent translation, it has roots reaching all the way back to the King James Version, which was published in 1611. Since its publication, several attempts have been made to create an updated version of the King James Bible. The first one came in 1885 with the publication of the English Revised Version, the second in 1901 with the American Standard Version, the third was the Revised Standard Version of 1952 and again in 1971, and finally, we have the ESV, which, again, was published in 2001. The King James Bible, along with the Revised Standard Version of 1971, served as the foundation upon which the ESV was constructed. Many of the words and phrases already found in those translations would be used as a starting point for creating the ESV. Like both of those versions, the ESV is a word-for-word -word translation meaning that, as far as possible, the original words in Aramaic, Hebrew, and Greek are simply rendered in English, while also retaining the same sentence structure to some degree. Word-for-word -word translations are generally more accurate than their thought-for-thought -thought counterparts, simply because their goal is to provide a more literal translation. Simply put, word-for-word -word translations are as close as you can get to the original text without having to learn those languages. That being said, the ESV is advertised as an essentially literal translation that seeks as far as possible to reproduce the precise wording of the original text and the personal style of each Bible writer. In some cases, however, word-for-word -word translations can be difficult to read because of the differences in sentence structure between the English and Greek and Hebrew languages. With the ESV, though, a lot of effort has been given to maintain its readability. In comparison, the King James Version is considered to be at a 12th grade reading level, while the ESV is at an 8th to 10th grade reading level. While two grade levels or four grade levels may not sound significant, trust me when I say that it is. The modern English used in the ESV as compared to the archaic English used in the King James makes a huge difference. I've even had some people tell me they like the way the ESV read better than their NLT, which is at a 6th grade reading level. Now, of course, this really is just personal preference, but I thought it was still worth mentioning. The ESV is also considered to be conservative when it comes to gender language. Unlike some other more liberal translations that seek to replace gender-specific pronouns with gender-inclusive ones, the ESV simply holds true to the original wording. In the area of gender language, they say, the goal of the ESV is to render literally what is in the original text. For example, the word any one is used to replace the phrase any man, where there's no corresponding word to man in the original language. But the word man is used in the ESV when in the original languages it's clear that a male person is being spoken of or described. This being the case, the gender language used in the ESV is, as far as we can tell, uninfluenced by our current culture. It isn't biased one way or the other, it simply lets the original wording speak for itself. Earlier I mentioned that the ESV is essentially an updated version of the King James Bible, but that wasn't to say that they're not without their differences. The main and large difference between them is their textual base. The King James uses the Textus Receptus, whereas the ESV makes use of the critical text. This is the reason why you'll see that some verses from the King James are absent from the ESV, or why some verses or passages in the ESV are wrapped in brackets. For example, when we look at Mark 16 verses 9 through 20, we'll notice that the entire passage is double bracketed, and that preceding the passage is a disclaimer that says some of the earliest manuscripts do not include uh, verses 9 through 20. So it's not that the publishers of the ESV are taking verses out of the Bible. 
It's that in the manuscripts they used to translate from, these verses just weren't there. Now, whether you prefer the critical text or the Textus Receptus is largely based on what you think is more authoritative. The manuscripts used in the critical text are much older than those in the Textus Receptus, but they're also fewer in quantity. But going into detail about these two textual bases is a whole different video in itself. Now, another thing to be aware of is that the ESV is updated periodically. Between 2001, when it was published, and 2006, there were some silent revisions made to the ESV that weren't made public. Now, to my knowledge, these were small changes, and they only affected a handful of verses. And one verse in particular that I was able to find online was Romans 3.9. Originally, the text said, For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under the power of sin. But the revised version just said, under sin. Again, in 2007, some revisions were made, as well as in 2011, and most recently some changes were made in 2016. Now, I'm not going to go into detail as to what all these changes looked like, but I'll leave links in the description below so you can check out these revisions for yourself. Something else you should know about the ESV is that a lot of them don't come standard with the words of Christ in red. Now, every one of my King James Bibles has this feature, and so... I was a little surprised as to how difficult it was to find an ESV with this feature. Right now I have three different ESV Bibles and none of them have the words of Jesus in red. Now I have seen it before, you can get it, but you may not be able to get the exact configuration you want. So for example, when I went to Mardell's to look for an ESV reference Bible, I was able to find one with Jesus' words in red, but it was a lot smaller and compact than what I was wanting, so I opted for something different. Now, this may or may not be a big deal to you, but I just wanted to mention it so you don't go out and order an ESV Bible assuming that the words of Jesus will be in red, only to find out otherwise. So what kind of ESV Bibles can you get? Well, pretty much any kind you want. As with any other Bible translation, you can get just a regular plain text Bible, a reference Bible, gender or age specific Bibles. You can get devotionals, parallels, journaling, readers' Bibles, whatever you're looking for. I can almost guarantee that it's already out there. So finding a specific type of Bible in the ESV shouldn't be a problem. So the last question I want to address is, who is the ESV for? And I'd say it's really for anyone who wants a solid, literal, word-for-word -word translation that gets us as close to the original text as possible without having to learn those biblical languages. Now, if you're someone who's already familiar with the King James or you're coming from the King James and you've spent a lot of time with it like I did, I don't think you'd have a huge problem transitioning to the ESV. Now, of course, it's going to read a little differently because it's using modern English, but being that the ESV was essentially an attempt to modernize the King James, they did try to retain some elements of the King James in it as best they could. So you'll probably notice some of that as you read the ESV. As far as its popularity and use goes, it was the fourth best-selling Bible translation of 2020, and a lot of well-known Christian ministers have endorsed it, such as R.C. Sproul, John Piper, and Francis Chan, to name a few. So it's definitely received a lot of support, and a lot of Christians are using it not only for personal reading and study, but from the pulpit as well. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, you've probably noticed this box sitting over here behind me, and in this box is my recommendation for an ESV study Bible. So this is the Reformation Study Bible by R.C. Sproul, and by far it's been the most helpful, thorough, and complete study Bible I've ever used. Now, I hear some of you making the objection already that you're not Reformed, and so this isn't the Bible for you. I completely get it. I'm not Reformed either. I, I definitely lean in that direction, but I'm not entirely convinced of everything in Reformed theology. But regardless of that, I still use this study Bible over any of my other ones simply because of how helpful and thorough it is. It has awesome book introductions, maps, illustrations, theological notes, a concordance, a Bible reading plan, and it even has a list of creeds, confessions, and catechisms all right here in the Bible. So if you're like me and you study the Bible a lot, You'll know how nice it is to have all this information right here in a single package so you're not having to scour 10 different books or articles or commentaries to find the information you're looking for. Now, of course, like anything, it does have its limitations and it certainly doesn't have all the answers you'll ever need. But more often than not, when I'm trying to understand what a particular verse or passage means, 
there's something in here that does help clarify that for me. And so if you're in the market for a solid ESV study Bible, definitely consider checking out the Reformation study Bible. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go check that out for yourself. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned what you needed to in order to decide if the ESV is right for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful. Until next time, take care and God bless.